All right. Well, I guess I'm gonna go live now, so. Hi guys, so I have some great news. I'm going to be talking about home buying and selling today um, with a friend of mine, Petra Thomas, and she is a real estate agent. And um, she was instrumental in me, um, in my home buying process and in my selling process. So I'm going to have the opportunity to talk to her um, when she's ready. I'm going to turn her on. So what's up, guys? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Um, we'll see what happens. So anyway, today I'm going to be talking um, with a friend of mine, Petra Thomas and Petra is a real estate agent and I'll tell you a little bit about her right now so um, she's a real estate agent at um, EXP and she's a native of Germany she lives in um, Raleigh and she's been there for a little while um, she uh, has two kids Tyler and Sydney Sydney who's also a member of EXP and a real estate agent and Petra was instrumental in me becoming a homeowner for the first time in 2019, 2019, 2020. And when I had the opportunity to move to Texas during the process of taking the position down here with the company that I work for, Petra was instrumental and she was my real estate agent. Um, and she assisted me in selling my home as well as buying the home that I live in now down here in Texas. So we're going to discuss a few principles and hopefully um, some things that would be helpful to people um, as they, uh, I, I hope, if it's your dream to own a home, um, to start the process, understanding a little bit about why credit is so important, um, the importance of the communication between you and your agent, understanding the market, um, price range and amenities, your pre-approval, um, some different loan programs. I was um, a person that had the loan, the loan program as well. And um, down payment, negotiations, inspections, closing costs, and getting the key. So I think Petra is with us. So I'm going to try to get us both on camera. Yay. Hey, Curtis. Hey, Petra. Can you hear me? Okay, excellent. So uh, um, I just kind of gave a little spiel of how I came um, to become a homeowner and I'm gonna make sure I get I can hear you as well so let me just make sure uh, okay can you you can still hear me right okay excellent so um for those that don't know again this is Petra Thomas she's a real estate agent in Raleigh she's a friend of mine um, so Petra I'll let you um, go ahead and tell a little bit about yourself And I'm gonna keep going fast, you're good. <laughs> Okay. All right, so I'm probably having a little problems hearing you, but I'm just gonna. No, no, it's not. It's not you. It's not on your end. It's on my end for some reason. All right, so um, I'll kind of give you a cue so you can, you can see my two when I'm finished, so you can see. All right, so my story is in 2019, I was in a dire situation, and I had to buy a home, and Petra helped me. Um, teaching me a little bit about the process. She was able to guide me to meet, I think his name was Greg, who was a lender. I didn't actually end up using Greg as my lender, but going through um, the process, I learned about um, credit. 
I learned about um, understanding the market and the houses that were available, something that I can afford, what it is that I'm looking for. Um, I also learned a little bit about the price ranges and the pre-approval and the different loan programs. At that time, I believe I used the NCFHA, which helped me out uh, immensely because I did not have uh, a lot of the down payment available. And so that was really um, something um, useful for me. And I think it's useful for a lot of people. For most people think that they actually have to have uh, these huge sums of um, or some huge large amounts of quantities of, of money in order to get into the home of their dream. And I don't think that's necessarily the case. And I'll let Petra exp expand on that. Oh, they can't hear you, they're saying. Hold on. Let me make sure. Lee's saying that they can't hear you, so I'm gonna try to go back. One second, Petra. And hopefully um, they can hear you now. Go back to the remote sources. I think they can hear you now. Okay. All right. So, yes. Yeah, so most people think they have to save for several years to come up with a 20% down payment. And while you try to do that, the prices go up, the interest rates have recently gone up. And so you really, in some cases, can buy with no money out of pocket depending on where you want to live. But um, that's why I tell my buyers the first step should be to uh, talk to a lender. And there are different lenders out there. Some of them don't do all the programs, but the basic programs are conventional. Uh, that's 3% or 5% down or 20% if you have it. That's for um, someone with a 720 credit score. But if you don't have that, that's no problem. So there is FHA, USDA, uh, VA, and for example, USDA, you can use 100% uh, financing. Um, you can probably, now the market has changed, now you can get the seller to pay some closing costs again, and you can get into a house with very little money. Um, USDA, FHA, they require probably a 620 score. Some lenders can do it with a, with a lower score, but typically 620 to 640. So if you're not there, then you should still talk to a lender, let them look at your credit and let them tell you what you need to do to get your score up. They can run a simulator and they can tell you exactly, you know, maybe you need to pay a credit card down to below 30%, or maybe you have an open collection um, for an old phone bill or for a cable bill. It could be something small that keeps your, your um, score down. And then also what helps if you have a credit card that has a decent limit, what you can do every month, if you start paying your bills with your credit card, and let your money sit in your account and then just pay that credit card off in full every month within two or three months your your credit score can go up considerably so so that's a few things that you can do so yeah um va loan of course that's 100 percent financing but only available to veterans and then like i said you have the ex uh, the fha and that's three and a half percent down typically but what uh curtis was doing with his uh, first purchase, he got the down payment assistance. Um, so that's available also. And so there are different options out there. And I would say just um, like if I you have a have realtor, it. if you have a realtor, you know, call them and let them uh, send you to a good lender. If you don't have anybody, I'm in North Carolina, but with EXP, we're all over the US. So if you need an agent in Texas or in Nevada or anywhere, really, you can call me or message me and I'll find a good realtor for you. Okay, so uh, a little time delay between North Carolina and oh. Texas because I, I heard her a little bit late. Um, and so I think the next thing that um, people talk to me about, so when I came to North Carolina in 2012, I did not have any credit. Uh, as far as the credit um, that you necessarily need to be operational or functional in society. And uh, that was a huge problem for me, uh, especially when it comes to buying a home, because you have to have credit. 
it's it, it's just the way the game works. So um, most people think that you have to have 700 or 800 credit or you know 850 credit, but I don't think that that's necessarily the case. And so um, when it comes to loan and loan programs, um, Petra, what do you think about um, the type of credit that people need for different loan packages? So like I said, there, I know I have one lender friend. He can do loans with a 580 score. Um, the lower your score is, the higher your interest rate is going to be because um, they tier the interest rates based on scores. Um, so I have one person that can do it with a 580, but you have to have compensating factors. Like you, you may have to have some money in the bank or you may need to make more money every month than you need to qualify for this home that you're trying to buy. So, but there are some lenders out there that can do a low score, but typically the average lender will look for a 620 to 640 score. So let's say you're at the 550 right now. There are probably little things that you can do. Like I said before, maybe pay a credit card down or maybe you don't have any credit or very little. So you could get uh, one or two secured credit cards. Um, you apply online. Premier, for example, is one. You apply, they give you a 200 or $300 credit line and you send them the money. So that's why it's called secured. They actually hold your money. You start using that credit card, you know, buy some gas with it every month, pay it off, pay it off in full every month, but use that for a couple months. And like I said, if you can get two, that's even better. Um, that will help you establish credit. You can also, some lenders will use, if you have no credit score, um, that's actually not going to keep you from buying. They will use your other bills. They will verify with, with your insurance company, with your, um, landlord, you know, with the utility company. So you can use alternate credit also to establish credit. Um, if you have some credit problems, then, you know, there are some good credit repair companies out there that can help you negotiate balances and, you know, get negative stuff off. So there are options, but you just need to talk to someone and let them guide you and let them tell you which way to go. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, the next uh, thing that I guess people always ask me about is the market, um, the difference between the buyer's market and the seller's market. Now, when we sold the house on Winston-Salem at that time, and I said that I was going to tell people today that um, we got a lot more <laughs> for it then yes. um, when, we, when we, bought it, we bought it. And simply because the market at that time... Um, presented the possibility that we could get more. So um, give an understanding of the market. How does that play into it all, Petra? Yeah, so over the last two years, we definitely had a strong seller's market. There were less homes than there were buyers. And so many homes, especially in our area in North Carolina, um, received anywhere from five to 20 to 30 offers. Um, sellers were getting thousands of dollars over asking price. And it was very difficult for first time buyers that didn't have a lot of cash to get into a home. Um, so a seller's market is when there is uh, less inventory than there are buyers. And usually um, the experts, they say, if you have a six month inventory available, anything less than six months is considered a seller's market and anything inventory that lasts more than six months, that would be a buyer's market. So in the beginning of this year, when the rates were still at three, three and a half percent, we were still in a strong seller's market. Um, but I think maybe in June, it shifted and it shifted really fast. Maybe two or three weeks, I saw a difference where all of a sudden I saw longer days on the market. I saw some price reductions and um, some homes just didn't fly off the shelf anymore like they did. So we're slowly moving back into, I would call it a normal market. Most some people say, you know, it's slowing down, but I think what we have now is the normal market. That's what we were used to before COVID, before the real estate market went crazy. Um, and of course, the interest rates play into that too. The higher rates, I mean, they're double what they were in the beginning of the year. Um, that means some buyers that were qualified for 300,000, they now cannot afford that house anymore. They cannot buy that house. And so some buyers are waiting for the rates to come down before they enter the market again. 
uh, that also has to do with the market slowdown. Um, but it's still a good market. And if you want to buy, you should definitely look into it because uh, the prices are adjusting downward. And if you find a house that works for you and your family and that you really want, then you should go ahead and buy as long as you can afford the payment and then just maybe refinance when the rates come down. There are also options with interest rates. So the fixed rates, they're probably in the sevens right now, but you could also go with an adjustable rate. And these adjustable rates, they can be fixed for five years or seven years, depending on the lender. So you could get a lower rate right now, write that rate out for five years. And in that time, when the rates come down, you just refinance to the lower rate. Um, there's also something called um, the buy down, two one buy down, where the seller could now pay for that fee to buy your rate down 2%. And in the first year, your rate is 2% lower than it would be normally right now at a fixed rate. So the first first year you save basically 2%. And then the following year, it goes up by 1%. So you still save the difference between, let's say, 7 and 6. And then the third year, it will go to the rate that you would normally get right now. So there are options. And you just need to look at your income and really sit down with someone and let them give you all your options. All right. All right, so we got a good, a better understanding of the market uh, and the price range. That na that letter that's really, really important that I found and I had to learn about was the pre-approval letter. So right. let's get a little bit into that. Yeah, so uh, most buyers, they start off by calling me, the realtor. They're excited about starting to look for a house. but And, and when they call me, my first question, not my first question, but one of the questions I ask them is, you know, have you talked to a lender yet? Because you don't want to go out there and look at houses and fall in love with a house that you want to make an offer on, but you haven't even been pre-approved. You really don't know what you can afford. And then let's say you find out you can't get that house, but now you have this house in your head and it's going to be hard to find something else that you like. Uh, but also the main reason why you need to get pre-approved is to know exactly what payment you're looking at, what price range you can afford, and also, a seller will not even consider your offer without pre-approval. So there, there is really, you can't make a move without the pre-approval letter. So step one, talk to a lender. And then once you have the green light from the lender, then you talk to your realtor and you, you know, you sit down with them, tell them what you're looking for, what areas, uh, what's important to you in the house, what price range, uh, amenities, you know, schools, all that. And then we can start looking. Okay. And we covered a little bit of the type and types of loan programs. I believe mine was the NCFHA. And then there's the conventional loan programs. Right. Uh, there's the 1530 loan programs. Um, I don't know that people know all about these programs. So if you could just expand a little bit on that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, there is uh, typically most people get a 30 year loan. That means the loan is amortized over 30 years. If you stay in that house for 30 years, it takes you 30 years to pay the loan off. Um, the FHA is most probably the most used program for people who don't have a 720 credit score. It's a government program uh, that allows you to buy with three and a half percent down, or you could also use the down payment assistance from North, here in North Carolina for North Carolina Housing. Um, the next program would probably be the uh, USDA. That's 100% financing, but that is restricted by area. So that's a rural government program and they want you to live outside the city. So if you want to live in Raleigh, for example, that program is not available to you. But if you are willing to live you know, in the outskirts and, and they actually have a map where you can plug an address in and to see if it qualifies. So the house actually has to qualify for the program. Uh, if the house qualifies, then you can get 100% financing. The PMI, which is the mortgage, uh, the private mortgage insurance is typically lower on that program. And um, you, le you need less money out of pocket because you only have to worry about the closing cost. So if you're not trying to be in the city, then you want to look at that program because you could probably buy a house with $5,000. And now since the market is changing, you could possibly buy with less because some sellers are offering incentives again, like closing costs or, you know, um, 
repair concessions, which you could then use as closing costs. So there are ways again to get into a house with little to no money, which was not possible a year ago. Um, the next loan, like I said, VA, but that's only for veterans. That's a hundred percent program. Um, and then there is the conventional, which is for people typically who have 720 and up credit score. Um, with that, the lowest down payment is 3%. If you put, and then you could do 5%, 10% or 20%. With any loan, if you put 20% down, then you avoid that private mortgage insurance premium, which can be anywhere from 100 to $350, depending on the price range that you're buying. So it's, it's a good thing to not have to pay that, but with most loans, once your home, once you can show that you have 20% equity in your home, then you can get rid of that mortgage insurance premium. Um, let me see what other loan programs. There are some, you know, there are some lenders they have creative. So these bank statement only programs are coming back, but you want to try and stay in a, what I consider a normal program. So you don't have like interest rates going up after five years, like, you know, jump up high, or there are some people that do a interest only loan that means you never pay your principal off you always only pay interest and that means you will never own that home you might as well keep renting in that case um so yeah but so fha usda va and conventional those are the four loans that most people use right. okay thanks vetra um i You're guess welcome. the next thing would probably be um the down payments uh, ne and negotiations, or we could kind of get a little bit into the um, open houses and looking at homes. Uh, what do you th What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I guess we probably. Um, so, I'm not sure how it, how it is in most other states, but here in North Carolina, once once you are pre-approved and you find a realtor that you're comfortable with, uh, we will ask you to sign a buyer agency agreement, and that's good for me and for you because as realtors, we only get paid at closing. So if a buyer wants me to devote my time and my energy to finding them a house, then I, you know, of course I want to know that when it's all over and I did my job and you're moving into your home that I get paid, but that's not the only reason. If you don't sign a buyer agency agreement here in North Carolina, then I'm automatically working for the seller as a sub agent to the listing agent. And I really can't even help you determine what you should offer for the house or what the house is worth or whether the seller might be motivated. I cannot tell you anything about the seller that might help you uh, get a better deal. So, um, and also, you know, I want you to be committed to me like I'm committed to you. So buyer agency agreement. So don't, don't get all scared when a realtor puts this paperwork in front of you. It's something that we need to get signed by law really uh, before we make an offer. Uh, but at the very least, we have to give you the brochure that's a, that explains how agents work with realtors and get that, get that paper signed saying that we gave that to you. And then when we make an offer, that's when we really have to have to buy our agency agreement. So there, if, I mean, you can refuse to sign it, but if you don't sign it, then I'm working for the seller. So that's, that's the first step that I talk about with my buyers when I first meet them. And then of course I talk to them about their, um, what they're looking for in the house and, and what area, um, and just about the whole process. So once we have that green light, you sign the buyer agency agreement, we start looking for a house and you find the one, oh my God, Petra, I have to have this house. This is it. This is it. You know, you walk in the door and you just know this is the house. So, um, I pull up the comps, we look at the comps together, you decide what you offer, you know, I'll make sure you don't go too high or, you know, if you really want the house, I'll help you determine what, what might be a good offer. And uh, we make that offer with the offer has to go a, a deposit, two deposits, actually. There is a due diligence deposit that is not non-refundable here in North Carolina. I think a lot of states don't have that deposit, but we do. Um, the last two years, those deposits got out of hand. They were 20, 30, 40, 100, 150,000. Uh, they are back to more reasonable ranges. 
I would say 2000 to 5000 for, you know, anything under 350. I just wrote an offer for someone where we did $3000 non-refundable. The house was 323 and we got it for 300,000. I haven't seen anything like that in over 2 years. So, but like I said, homes are sitting a little longer and sellers get anxious when they don't sell on day 1. So, um, you know, they're a little bit more flexible now. So the due diligence deposit is non-refundable if you walk away and don't close on the house for any or no reason. Um, but it applies towards the purchase price at closing. And we also still have the earnest money deposit, which we always had. And um, that can be, you know, $500, $1,000. That sits in the attorney's trust account until closing and also gets applied. But if, let's say, you walk away during the due diligence period, that earnest money gets refunded to you. Um, once, once you're under contract, I will order a home inspection, termite inspection, maybe a radon inspection. Radon is a gas that comes out of the ground and is said to be able to cause cancer. So some of my buyers do that radon test, some don't, but that's totally up to you. And if you buy a home that's in the country, maybe there's a well and septic tank, then you have to get those inspections too. So the inspections can probably range from 400 to around $1,000, depending on what you need. Um, on At the same time, the lender, your lender will order the appraisal. And the appraisal will make sure that your home is actually worth what you're paying for it. Um, so we usually set up a due diligence period of two or three weeks. That gives enough everybody enough time to get the appraisal back, make sure the home is valued what you're paying for. And we also get the inspections back and we can try and negotiate some repairs with the seller which we haven't done in a long time. We People were just buying houses as is in the last two years. And I used to tell my buyers, you know, you give them this deposit, you're going to buy this house with all the problems because they, they can keep your money and you have to start over. They, they don't make any repairs. But now this is changing again. So uh, things are looking better and uh, we can get those concessions again. Once all the inspections are up, done, uh, we negotiated them. Um, the lender has the appraisal back. The loan went through underwriting, which means the underwriter looked at everything. Sometimes they come back with some conditions. They want an explanation. Why did you have this late payment three years ago? Um, you know, um, we need an explanation about your paycheck. You know, do you get these bonuses every year or can we count them or not? So they come back with some questions, but it's usually just they're trying to just make sure they can sell your loan later. So you just give them the information. And once the underwriter approves the loan, it goes to their closing department and you are approved to close. And usually you can close within five days or so, three to five days. Um, at closing, once you sign here in North Carolina, both seller and buyer close with the same attorney. Um, you go to closing, you sign all your paperwork, the deal gets recorded and you get your keys. So. Um, that's basically the home buyer process in a nutshell. All right. I think the only thing left to be covered then um, would be getting the keys. But there was something that I found interesting in the whole process is the inspections. Um, if we could just touch on that just a second. Yeah. Um, that's, so you, you have the home inspection. The home inspector, he looks at the house, he looks, you know, at the roof, he looks at the air conditioning system, the water heater, the heating system. He goes in the crawl space, makes sure there is not no excessive moisture in the crawl space or no mold. Um, he basically looks at the whole house and he, he runs the water everywhere, making sure there are no leaks. Um, he tests all the receptacles. Um, basically, he, he takes a close look at the house, makes sure everything is okay. Of course, there's never a house that where everything is okay. So you always have some items on the list and you will get an inspection report with photos describing the problems. And once we get that report, we take that, discuss it and decide what you want the seller to take care of. So the seller then has several options. They can repair the items that we ask them to repair they can give you an allowance to do that yourself after closing, or they can say no, they don't want to do anything. So at that point, if they say no, then you have two options. You can move forward with the deal and say, I'll take care of it later myself. Or you can say, well, I'm not going to buy the house. 
and I'm walking away. If you do, then you lose your due diligence fee that you gave the seller. But you get, will get back your earnest money. So um, if you don't close, then you will lose some money plus the inspection fees that you already paid. Um, so that's a home inspection. Then we have the termite inspection, which is, of course, very important here in North Carolina. We have termites. Um, oh, I meant to tell you that. So the home inspection ranges by size of house, probably from three fifty to six hundred dollars. Um, the termite inspection, seventy five dollars to maybe a hundred dollars. Um, termite inspectors, they go around, they go in the crawl space and they also go in the house and they look for these little termite tunnels uh, in the crawl space on the wood pieces usually to see if there are active termites. They can also tell you if a, if a home has been previously treated for termites. So that's probably to me, that's the most insp important inspection in North Carolina and it's very inexpensive. So don't skip that one, okay? Um, the other, the other uh, thing is the radon test. It's not really an inspection, but it's a test. Um, they have this device that they put in the house for two days. I think it's 48 hours that measures the radon gas in the air. And if that's above a certain level, then we will ask the seller to remediate the radon. And the way that's done is uh, they put a fan into the crawl space, or if the home is on the slab, they drill a hole through the slab and they have this fan suck out the air from the ground and they vent it outside to make sure that that radon gas does not stay in your house. Um, that remediation system can cost thousand dollars for a, a slab and probably closer to two thousand if you if your house is on a crawl space but typically most sellers will pay for that because if you walk away because of it then now they have to disclose that they have radon in the house and they'll end up having to fix it anyway um so radon and then like i said before if you're on a on a land on a piece of land that has septic and well then you want to definitely have a water test done to make sure there's no harmful bacteria in it or maybe lead. Um, and also um, have a septic inspector come out and make sure the septic tank is okay. Uh, sometimes it's full and it needs to be pumped. Sometimes some repairs are needed, but yeah. So those are basically those inspections that you need. You can also decide to have a separate um, HVAC inspection. Uh, most buyers don't pay for that, but you know, it's a good idea. If the system is older, you may want to have someone separate come out uh, expert come out and look at that and then let's see is there anything else that's basically those are the main inspections that you need if if the if the home inspector finds a problem with the structure sometimes they find like cracks in the foundation or in the crawl space walls they usually recommend to have a structural engineer come out and take a closer look to make sure it's just a regular settlement uh crack and not a a real problem. So if you have a structural engineer come out, that's probably going to run you between three fifty and six hundred dollars. But that's that's rare. That doesn't happen that much. So but definitely your regular home inspection and termite. Those two you should definitely do. Even if the home is new, it doesn't matter. Do your home inspection because even the new home is not perfect. And you know, the inspector will find some things that you or I didn't see or couldn't see. So that's it as far as inspections go. Excellent. <laughs> All right. So that pretty much covers everything, whether you're a buyer or seller. And the last thing that um, everybody's always super excited for is getting those keys on the last day um, when you're actually ready to move into your house. Um, what can the homeowner or the, or the, uh, the seller or buyer expect on that last day when they get their keys? Yeah. So that day of closing, um, you do your walkthrough at the house, either the evening before closing or the day of closing. Make sure that, you know, overnight the, there was no storm that blew the roof off or you don't have a new roof leak that you uh, don't want to discover after closing. So you just walk through the house one final time. And if everything looks good, you go to the attorney or to the escrow company uh, to close and um, you sign a bunch of paperwork if you're the buyer. And uh, once you sign all those loan documents and the lender has sent your loan funds to the attorney, you brought your check, whatever you had to bring to closing. Uh, if all the money is there and everything is signed, then the attorney can record the deal at the register of deeds. And once the sale is recorded, they will hand you the keys. So 
you take your keys, you go to your new home, and you hopefully you enjoy your home for many years, and you now have a stable uh, mortgage payment versus a rent payment that probably goes up every year. You know, so uh, the mortgage payment payment can fluctuate a little bit because um, sometimes the taxes will go up a little bit, or your insurance company might decide to increase your payments, but it will pretty much stay where it was if you have a fixed rate. Whereas uh, I'm renting right now. I sold my home and I'm looking. So my rent just went up $200 for a two bedroom. So it went, it was 1500 and now it's, I'm paying over $1,800. So this is my second year. So um, yeah, you don't have that when you buy a home. And also you can, you know, do to your home, you can make improvements, you can paint the colors you want. You know, you can change the flooring, you can fence your yard in, you can have pets where you don't have to worry about the neighbor, you know, and the dog, dog is barking and the neighbor is complaining. So home ownership is a great thing. And there's also statistics that show that children who live in a home versus a rental, um, they have a more stable home life and they are doing better in school. And it's just, um, it's a great thing. And it's still the American dream. So you know, I'm I'm from Germany. It's very difficult to buy there. So I'm just, uh, I've been here now for 30 years, but I still think that the U.S. is an awesome place to achieve whatever you want to, whatever you want have, you know, whatever you set your mind to. So, um, you know, go ahead and talk to a lender or a realtor and just let them take a look and see, you know, what you need to do to get to get started. And uh, don't don't say oh next year because you will still be in the same situation if you don't take action now. You know next year you will be you will say the same thing oh well, maybe next year maybe next year so do it now just talk to someone and you know it's it's not the end of the world if you're not ready right now but at least somebody can tell you what you need to do so go ahead call someone or message me um, and I can find you someone that can help you and if you're here in Raleigh I would love to help you in Raleigh or surrounding counties. But I hope this helps. So it's it's not as scary as you may think as a first time buyer. You just need to have someone that can guide you along and answer your questions. And yeah, Curtis can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks, Fetcher. Thank you for taking the time You're out welcome. of your day um, to Thank come you. on. And uh, I hope that this is gonna be something that's really informational and inspiring for people. I can tell you as a homeowner, um, now and coming to North Carolina with zero dollars in my pocket and having zero credit and now being on my second home and all of that is possible through Petra Thomas because she gave me the information and she walked me through the entire process both times and now I will tell you so my first home I bought it was a three bedroom in Winston-Salem and I bought it for 145000 and then we actually turned around and sold that home a couple years later for 230,000 and we probably maybe could have got more but the situation was um, what what it was and we I had to get a home down here in in Texas and I can tell you that the home that I bought down here in Texas and Petra actually helped me with that as well that um it's now worth about 50 to 70,000 more and I just bought it on April 1st. So home owning is really, really big. It's big on the accumulation of wealth. As Petra said, it has the socioeconomic advantages. It has the advantages of providing a stable life for you and your family and for your children. And it's something that you can pass along for generations um, to come. So Petra, really thank you for everything that you've done for me personally. So I know well um, when she's talking about what she's talking about, that it works and that she knows what she's doing. And I'll just give you the floor for the last statement. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, I know you, you weren't really in my area when you started looking, but I'm still glad that I could give you some pointers. And um, I'm also thankful that you called me back when you were ready to sell. So thank you for, you know, being such a loyal friend and client. And uh, yeah, thank you for this opportunity to share some of the basics with people. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Petra, thank you for coming on and you have a great rest right. of your day and I'll talk to you okay. later. Bye bye. You too. Mm -hmm. Bye. All right, guys. So that was um, Petra Thomas and uh, I'm really glad that she had the opportunity to come on and talk with me. So uh, yeah, I hope that 
um, we've said some things and give you information that will help you in your home buying process or in your home selling process. And that's all I have for today. So thank you for watching and uh, you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye guys.